number 12. Uh, I am honored. Uh, you folks were very kind. We, we stayed up in your uh, uh, place up the hill last night, had a good night's rest, and uh, just a short distance right down to the church this morning. If I was late, I'd have totally been ashamed. I really would have. Uh, but we're here, and I, I'm grateful my wife came, and uh, we had the opportunity to sneak off just for a day or so, and uh, a few weeks ago, about three weeks ago, we had an opportunity to celebrate 22 years of marriage and uh, unfortunately I, I was sick and wasn't able to go and do anything as we normally are, uh, but yesterday we got to come up and spend a few extra hours here or there, so uh, she's put up with me for 22 years and I'll receive a golden crown when I get over yonder one glorious day. Hey Amen, you men folk can help me right there, all right? John's gospel this morning, let's preach. I found out if I'm nervous, the best place I can do is just preach. Uh, Brother Vinoy said this about you folks this morning and talking to him a little while yesterday evening. He said, preacher, they'll quit singing so that they can get more preaching. Uh, and uh, I thought that's a great compliment by a church. Friend, I've been preaching in several different places. Uh, I've, I've pastored out of 20 years of preaching, just celebrated 20 years of preaching a few weeks ago as well. Uh, and out of those 20 years of pre uh, preaching, I've pastored 17 and a half of them. Uh, recently in June, I've resigned my church and the Lord has kept us busy. He's opened doors for me. And I'll say this, you don't have singing like this in every place that you go. You ought to count what you got. You ought to, you ought to realize just how precious it is and keep it. I keep singing about who you're singing about. That, that Sunday school teacher started it off right. What a savior. And man, he's helped me there. The choir got up and sung. He keeps me singing. Keep singing about him. He's the one that makes the difference. And that's who I, I want to preach on this morning. I'm excited about what I've got to preach. And I, I want to preach to you and be a help to you. John chapter number 12, you find your place. Let's stand this morning that we can honor the author of this book. And again, I, I'm very grateful that Brother Vinoid let me stand where I'm standing this morning. I'll do my very best to, uh, to, to reverence the Lord and to reverence you folks and to reverence the pulpit that he's given me this privilege. Now you're in John chapter 12. Let's back up just a moment into John chapter 11. Look with me in verse number 54. We'll begin reading there. John chapter number 11, verse 54. The Bible said, Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and continued there with his disciples. Verse 55, the Bible says, And the Jews, and the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye that ye will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they may take him. In the chapter 12, the Bible said, Then Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, uh, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he had cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, uh, had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying has she kept this. Uh, uh, for the poor always you have with you, uh, but me you have not always. Uh, Lord, just for a little while this morning, I pray that you take I, I, this scripture, you'd eliminate it once again into my heart. I, I, Lord, you'd bring remembrance to those things that we've studied. Help us to preach I, in the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, help us not to come and sound as a tinkling cymbal and sounding brass. I, but Lord, help us to preach in the power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. I, I, Lord, I pray that you'd woo sinners. Draw them unto yourself and save them this morning. I, I pray that you'd encourage the saints and help us, Lord. I, I, that is what 
will go forth in this day. Again, Lord, I count where I stand uh, as of holy ground. Uh, uh, help me to be sensitive to that that you bid us to do. Uh, I will be careful to give you thanks. Uh, uh, Christ's name, uh, uh, we make a plea. Uh, it may, uh, you may be seated this morning. Uh, uh, now I'm interested, we all know in John chapter number 11, please don't fall out with me this morning uh, uh, with the familiarity of the text. Uh, uh, but in John chapter number 11, we know that Jesus comes to Bethany. Uh, it was a place that he spent a lot of time in his earthly ministry. Uh, he had three friends there uh, uh, by the name of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Uh, it may, now listen to me, he got there. Uh, and when he got there, Martha uh, uh, met him and told him that if he'd have been there, uh, her brother would not have died. Uh, uh, we know the count that Lazarus was took in. Uh, he died uh, and now he's stunk. But we know by the time we get to chapter 12, uh, uh, Lazarus has been brought back to life. Uh, he's left the tomb and now he's at the table. Uh, uh, friend, I'd love to tell you that's what I'm preaching on this morning. Uh, uh, but I am interested in the table. Uh, uh, now the Jewish folks did not pull up at a table such as you and I did. Uh, uh, but they would recline uh, on their left elbow. Uh, and they would be laid around in a circle. Uh, and the meal would be in the midst of them. Uh, I'd like for you to consider this morning uh, of who's at the table. Uh, I want you to think for just a minute uh, how the 12 disciples were at the table. Uh, you count them with me now and stay with me. Uh, not only were the 12 disciples, but Jesus was at the table. Uh, Mary uh, and Martha uh, and Lazarus was at the table. Uh, if you read the parallel gospel of Mark chapter number 14, uh, you'll find that they were at Simon the leper's house. Huh? Oh, so Simon the leper was there. Huh? Yeah, man, you say, preacher, I don't know about that. I promise you, go over there and read it. Huh? Mark chapter number 14. Huh? You can find that down through verses 1 through 8 as well. Huh? But you'll find now that there were 17 people huh? gathered around that table. Huh? Hey, man, now listen to me. 17 in the Bible is the number of victory. Huh? If you don't believe me, go back to Genesis. 17th day of the month huh? and that, Mo, uh, that Noah landed the ark on top of Mount Arad. Huh? It was on the 17th day of the month huh? and the lamb was slain on the 14th day but was brought forth on the 17th day. Huh? I'm glad there's victory. If you go over there in the book of Romans, huh? out of the 8th chapter and verses 35 through 39 huh? you'll find 17 things that cannot separate us from the love of God. Huh? Glad that I got victory this morning. Ain't you? Huh? Uh, but now listen Listen to me. I want you to realize that there's a week left uh, in the Lord's life in the scripture that we read. Uh, uh, John is so eat up with this part of his life uh, uh, that half of the gospel of John is written about this week. Uh, uh, Matthew uses one third of his writings uh, uh, to tell us about the last week of the Lord Jesus' life. Uh, uh, Mark uses about 40% of his writing uh, uh, to tell us about this event and the crucifixion and the resurrection. Uh, uh, Luke uses about one fourth uh, uh, to let us know. Uh, can I say to you, look over there real quick with me in verse 54 through 57 and I'll preach that real quick uh, and then I'll give you the meat of my message and we'll go home. Uh, I notice now the Bible said that they were in Ephraim. Uh, uh, that word Ephraim simply means fruitful. Uh, uh, they were in a fruitful place. The Lord had came aside from Jerusalem. Uh, he would got himself over in Ephraim uh, and they were searching for him at Jerusalem. Huh? They sought him, friend, but they wouldn't really want him. Huh? Hey, we were looking to kill him. Hey, man, they read your Bible. That's what it says right there in verse 56. Huh? And they sought for Jesus. Do you realize that Jerusalem huh, had lost out huh, because they didn't have the Lord in their city at that time, but they had Ephraim. Huh? And now the Lord leaves Ephraim. Huh? He comes over to Jerusalem, or actually to Bethany. Huh? And when he gets to Bethany, they were there. Huh? Can I say to you this morning, huh? uh, thousands were there due to the Passover. Huh? And they were looking to buy a lamb. Huh? Uh, but none of them was looking to worship the lamb. Huh? Can I say to you this morning, the Passover has always been about the lamb. Huh? It'll always be about the lamb. Huh? Can I tell you
you, friend, from Genesis to Revelation, it's about the Lamb. And the cry of the Old Testament is, where is the Lamb? And the cry of the New Testament is, behold the Lamb. And the cry of heaven is, worthy is the Lamb. Hey, man, it's about the Lamb. It's not about the donkey, the elephant, or any other animal. But it's about the Lamb of God. And it's able to take away the sin of the world. But I want you to consider now, friend, the Lamb of God. He's come in the midst of these people. Seventeen of them has gathered up around the table. I want you to, want you to stay with me for just a moment. I want to preach about them seventeen that's around the table. I know, sir, no, ma'am, I don't have seventeen points, so you can take a deep breath and be relieved right there. But I want you to notice there's three types of people that were at the table. There's three types of people that are in the church house this morning. Those was those that were watching, those that were worrying, and those that worshipped. You'll have to make up your mind of which one you are this morning. First of all, I'd like for you to look at the table. I'd like for you to picture with me for just a moment. Oh, Lazarus. If you study his name, it means to whom God helps. A friend with a name like that. He ought to have been worshipping. But instead, he was sitting at the table and just watching what was going on. Stay with me now. A Lazarus friend, if anybody at the table ought to have been praising the Lord, it ought to have been him. Look back with me in chapter 11 real quick like I'm going to make some references. I'm going to shoot them real fast at you. If you'll listen fast, we'll nod our heads together and we'll move on rather quickly. Notice in verses 32 and 39, the Bible said he's dead. Not sick, but he's dead. He's oblivious, a friend to his surroundings. He's oblivious to the presence of the Lord. He is grave, yard, dead. And notice not only was he dead, but he was decayed. You remember what Martha said, Lord, by now, he stinketh. Hey, man, that's what she said to him. Can I say to you this morning, don't let the stink stop you, church. There's some of you that's got some things in your life that stinks right now. But don't cause that to let you sit at the table and just watch what's going on. You ought to worship him because of what he's done in the past. And if you can't worship him for that, you ought to worship him just for who he is. He's worthy because he is God. Can I say not only was Lazarus dead, but he was decayed and he was doomed. Hey man, look with me in verse 21, 32, and 36. A friend in the minds of all the people. In that tomb, Lazarus dead, and there's no hope for him. A matter of fact, the Jewish people had already hired the mourners. They'd already showed up with the flutes and the trumpets. And friend, they were singing their sad songs. They considered it all gone. But I'm glad, friend, the Lord only showed up in the New Testament at four funerals and all four of them that he showed up to how they came back alive ain't you glad what he told Martha is still true today I am the resurrection and the life hey man church if you'll believe this you'll know I noticed friend he was dead decayed and doomed but I want you to notice in verses 43 and 44 he received a personal call hey man ain't you glad for that day in your life when the Lord spoke spoke to you and you were dead huh? in your sins and trespasses huh? and he called you by name huh? I'm kind of like the old country preacher said huh? if the Lord didn't call Lazarus by name huh? every dead person in that graveyard would have got up from the dead huh? but I'm glad he specifically huh? I spoke to old Lazarus huh? you want to know why he's four days late huh? a friend of Jewish people believed the spirit would hover over the body for three days huh? so when the Lord showed up he wanted the world to know that the spirits left the stinks there there's absolutely no hope so if this boy was ever going to live again it would be a manifestation of the spirit and the power of God a friend remember when Jesus began to pray unto his father he said it was to glorify him that Lazarus would be resurrected from the dead I noticed not only did he receive a personal call but he received the precise call. Huh? And notice what your Bible said. Huh? After Lazarus, there's a comma. Huh? 
and he said come forth I'm glad friend that day when he spoke to me not only did he call me by name but he told me to come on that I'd come forth amen I'm glad that he's made me a fisher of man I'm glad that he's called me into his saint, into his dear kingdom called me out of darkness into his marvelous light can I say not only was it a precise call but it was a powerful call you say how do you know a friend I don't know of a man woman boy or girl in this building that has power over death but friend when Jesus spoke to him he was able you ever seen a dead man walk but old Lazarus come out now you can picture it in your mind but they would have been mummified his arms would have been taken to his side his legs would have been together he'd have looked like that fellow on Scooby Doo when you growed up and watched that cartoon you remember in some of the early parts of it he'd have come forth but I'm glad the Lord said loose him and let him go hear me and hear me well Lazarus now at the table and not only friend he's got life he's got liberty and he's got light you say preacher you don't know he's got that I ain't never seen a dead man could eat I ain't never seen a dead man that could see but I'm glad to report unto you he's at the table and not only that but he had luxury a friend what a privilege it must have been how to be able to come back and sit at the table of his sisters and eat again in the presence of the Lord there was old Lazarus just sitting and watching a friend many of us how we've been called out of darkness into light how we'll come to church Sunday after Sunday a Wednesday after Wednesday and we'll just sit at the table and watch what's going on can I say to you it's time for you to become a worshiper and worship the Lord in spirit and truth he's done something for you that nobody else could I notice now somebody else sitting at the table look there sits old Nathaniel I hear Peter now saying Nathaniel what in the world are you sitting here looking for and he says oh well what's the big deal Peter said don't you remember back there when you climbed up under that tree and the Lord come down the road and you was hiding from him you say put your words at that John chapter 1 verse number 46 he said it can any good thing come out of Nazareth and then old Nathaniel said behold an Israelite in whom there is no gal found honey can I say to you this morning it's a wonderful thing when you figure out who the Lord really is in your life when you figure out that he is your savior there's old Nathaniel I realized that there's something good that could come out of Nazareth it's got a tie to the Old Testament to the book of Isaiah because folks believe nothing good could come out of that city I'm glad to report unto you this morning friend how the Lord's come how to your little hometown where you are I called you out and brought you in that he might take you up some glorious day you ought to be worshiping him for not leaving you where you was when he found you honey I'm glad this morning I'm on the winning side I'm not talking about Carolina I'm not talking about Tennessee but I'm talking about the winning team I'm talking about some glorious day when he breaks the eastern sky I'm going yonder to spend eternity but there's old Nathaniel just watching then we look over there and there sits old Andrew and they say well Andrew what do you got to say so I'm just watching I'm just at the table and you say well preacher why would Andrew have anything to worship about well Andrew according to the gospel of Matthew according to the gospel of Mark and the gospel of John he saw his brother get saved by the good grace of God hey man how many of you in here has seen the Lord save some of your family member if you can't rejoice over the fact that you got born again surely to the good grace of God you can rejoice over the fact that he saved somebody's family or your family member 
either your brother or your sister. I don't know about y'all, but back in North Carolina this morning, I got a 17-year-old and a 14-year-old. Both of them professed to be saved by the good grace of God. And man, I can worship him because of what he did for them in their life. But friend, how many of us don't get excited anymore? We heard about the preacher being over in Illinois and five people getting saved over there. I remember in a time past that the church would have shouted the place down when they heard of sinners getting saved. But now we just kind of look and say, oh, ain't that wonderful. A friend where has the redeemed God? Why we've lost our excitement and our zeal? The world shoving all their stuff down our throat? Making us swallow some of this? LGBTQRSTING and everything else they want to add to it? And we're supposed to rejoice in that fact. And friend, we've got somebody. Amen. According to that fellow back there that talked this morning, he's talking about that high priest. It cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. In the Old Testament, they had to send a man every year to do something about their sins. But I'm glad when Jesus went in. You read about him, friend. He is the only high priest that has ever entered into the Holy of Holies and sat down. You want to know why he sat down? Oh, Aaron couldn't sit down because his work was never done. He knew next year he's going to have to come back again. But when the Lord Jesus walked into the Holy of Holies with his blood on his forefingers and his thumbs and shook it on the mercy seat, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Honey, I want you to know this morning there's an anchor that still holds and the Lord Jesus is still seeking out that whom he can save. Oh, Andrew saw his brother get born again and called into the ministry. Honey, we ought to rejoice when God does something in the members of our family. Not only that, there's old Peter. Somebody said, now listen to us. We as churches in this day and time, if Peter was still living, we'd pay him to come give his testimony. Yeah, man, he's the only man in the Bible other than the Lord Jesus. Listen to me, that walked on water. I looked in the Guinness Book of World Record. Ain't nobody else there, friend. Yeah, man. Peter and Jesus. That puts you in a limited group real quick like now, does it not? If anybody ought to have been worshiping. Hey, man, you ever tried to step out on water? I'll just be honest with you. One time I thought I was that spiritual. But I found out when the water began to bubble over my head, I wasn't quite like Peter as I thought I was. I'm a whole lot better boat sitter than I am a wave walker. Somebody say amen right there. Yeah, man, listen to me, church. There's old Peter. Huh? If anybody ought to have been up, huh? he saw the Lord steal the water. Huh? He saw the Lord, man, he saw the Lord pick him up huh? out of the storm huh? and sustain him. Huh? Uh, Peter, listen to me. Peter also saw huh? his mother-in-law who laid sick with a fever. Huh? He saw the Lord walk into the room and touch her huh? and made her whole. Huh? It's a good possibility huh? that in Capernaum, huh? when them men tore the roof off that house, it very well could have been Peter's house. Huh? He saw a ten-legged man come to church. Huh? Hey man, huh? you say, preacher, you've lost your mind. Huh? Had a ten-legged man come to church that day, but he took up that that had him bound. Huh? He rolled it up under his arm and went walking out. Huh? Uh, Peter saw it. Huh? If anybody ought to have worshipped, huh? it ought to have been him. Huh? Now I could preach on them other disciples, but I don't want to bore you to death. Huh? I could tell you about Thomas. Huh? I could tell you about Bartholomew. Huh? I could tell you about the other two James. James. Huh? I could tell you about Thaddeus. Huh? Hey man, listen to me. I can tell you about Judas. Huh? And I will in just a moment. And Simon the Canaanite. But friend, I, listen to me. Them men saw revival in Samaria. Hey man, you remember when Jesus must needs to go through Samaria? He showed up down there. He walked down through Samaria where Jews would not go. Must needs go through Samaria. Them men were there. They saw him stop and talk to a woman with a water pot. Shacked up. Hey, man, been married before. Shacked up now. She had six men in her life. But can I tell you on that day, she met the seventh man. 
got saved by the good grace of God. You know what the difference was? There was a day in that woman's life when she got the water in her instead of on her. That'd do real good for some church members. How to get him in us instead of just on us. Amen. And you say, well, what happened? She went out and other people believed. She constrained him to stay there and he stayed there two more days and revival broke out in Samaria. Because of what happened to that woman. They saw him. They saw the blind get their sight. Amen. You, re- you with me this morning? They saw the blind get their sight. They saw the lame walk again. They saw the deaf to be able to hear. They saw all these miracles that the Lord Jesus did. And instead they're just laid back on the elbow. Well, I'll just watch his service. You know what you get out of a service exactly what you put into it. If you want to be a spectator, you can go back home just being a spectator. But friend, I want you to know I ain't satisfied sitting on the end of the bench. But then I want to preach on one other fellow real quick like Kenna, Simon the leper. If there was anybody that knew what rotten flesh smelled like, you see, friend, and them old boys that got leprosy, there would be sores that would come up on their body and their clothes would get in it. And that pus would begin to come out with blood and water and their clothes would begin to stink. You know, matter of fact, that's what, a, that's what the Bible speaks about when he says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's what it's talking about, the rags of a leper. It's what it's exactly talking about in the context of that scripture. Now listen to me. Also, that leper, if you go back and study in the Old Testament, he couldn't come into town. Huh? He had to stand outside the gate. Huh? He had to come Cover his upper lip, huh? and if anybody got close to him, huh? he'd have to say, "Unclean, unclean, unclean." Huh? But now here's a man huh? that's sitting at the table huh? that doesn't have the sores on his arm. Huh? Here's a man that's not without the gate. Huh? He's sitting in the house, huh? having the privilege to worship. Huh? Honey, I'm afraid me and you huh? have forgot where the Lord's brought us from, huh? and we ain't worshiping Him. Uh, for what he's done in man in your life. Some of you's got a testimony, but it's been a long time since you told it. And man, an old man of God used to say back home, he said, when you share your testimony, he said, it's like baking a loaf of bread and pinching a piece off and passing it to other people. When you don't share your testimony, you don't know who you're robbing. You don't know who needs to hear your story. Here's Simon the leper. If any man knew what rotten flesh smelt like, he ought to have been worshiping. Look, we've noticed the watchers, but let's look at the warriors. There were two of them sitting at the table. How many grandmas I got in here this morning? Be honest, don't be ashamed. Grandmas, mamas, we got, raise them high again. I'll see them one more time. All right, I know I got warriors in here. Amen. Amen. Y'all, y'all help me right there. My wife's grandma, if she ain't got something to worry about, she'll make up something so she can worry a little while. Amen. She'll be at the thinking about all this, something that happened 80 years ago. But notice Martha. Martha's the warrior in the crowd. You say, preacher, how do you know? Over there in Luke's gospel, the first time she's mentioned in verses 38 down through 42, huh, you'll find that Martha huh, was serving. Huh, and Mary was at the feet of Jesus. Huh, and listen to verse 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, huh, Martha, Martha, huh, thou art careful huh, and troubled about many things. Is what he said. That word troubled, huh? or that word careful, huh? it means to be anxious. It may, man, huh? it means that she was just she she was uneasy. Huh? She was trying to figure out how she's going to feed that crowd. Huh? Has she come into the room and there was Mary huh? at the feet of Jesus? Now, if Martha was a Southern woman, huh? Huh? she'd had her hair up in curlers and she'd had a rolling pin in her hand huh? and said, "Lord, you're going to let me do all the serving while she sits at your feet." Huh? Amen. man, huh? has she? She was first like, stay with me. Huh? You go with me a little further. Over there huh? in John chapter number 11, verse number 20, I believe it is. Huh? And the Bible said this. Huh? Hey, she said, and when Martha, huh? as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, huh? Huh? she went and met him. Huh? Hey, man, can you imagine huh? How, what that looked like when Jesus huh? Huh? saw Martha coming down the road? Huh? Look with me in John chapter 12, verse number 2. Huh? 
Notice what your Bible says. Huh? And Martha served. Huh? The first time you see her in the Bible, she's serving. Huh? And the last time she's mentioned in the Bible, huh? she's still serving. Huh? Now hear me well this morning. Huh? How friend, we do need servants in the church. Huh? How, but sometimes we serve the things huh? How, that are not always the big things. Huh? And man, there's times when we get to serving huh? How, that we don't spend any time at his feet huh? How, to get what we need huh? so that we can go on for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. But then there was another warrior in the room. Look here in your Bible. First words that's ever mentioned about him is verse number four. The Bible said, And Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should, uh, should, which should betray him. Notice his first words, verse number five. He said, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? He was so worried about the poor instead of the Lord. Do you know what? We got some people in the church that is more worried about the scoreboard. And I notice y'all ain't got one up in here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? How many people's there? How much money was given today? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man. On the scoreboard. So there's some people that are more worried about how much the money the church has got instead of souls that are getting saved. Can I say to you this morning, friend, greed will destroy you. Hey, man, I realize we've got to have a certain amount to make everything go around. I'm not in. And it's bogging down a little bit right there. So I'm hitting somebody, the Holy Ghost. Hey, man, hey, it'll be all right. I'll just preach this to you and be straight to you, and then we'll be able to go home. I might not never get to come back, so I might well just unload both gun barrels huh, and go home empty. Huh? Hey, man. Huh? But can I say to you this morning, we, we experienced the same thing. Huh? Prior to COVID, huh? How we got up when we went to the church that we were at. Huh? How we were about six people when we went there. Huh? And just prior to COVID, huh? how would the Lord had blessed the church up to about 70 people. Huh? And then COVID hit. Huh? We went from 70 to 35. Huh? And then a little while after that, we lost another family or two. Huh? And we got down realistically about 23 or 24 people. Huh? And I'll just be honest with you. We had that blessed scoreboard right back there behind. Huh? Or actually it had been right here in this church huh? and every Sunday huh? I looked over there what used to be 70 and it was in the 20s huh? I looked over there and saw that we were barely had enough money to keep the doors open I'm just being honest y'all right right here huh? and I looked and I told one of the ladies in the church I said can't you paint huh? can't you draw and she said yeah huh? what do you want preacher huh? I said take down that scoreboard huh? and take off that offering huh? I'd take off the number of people and she said what do you want there huh? I said I want you to put this verse of scripture. Huh? Uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 14. Huh? Uh, but continue thou huh? in the things which thou hast learned huh? and hast been made assured of. Huh? I said every time, just put that on there. Huh? And then every Sunday I'd come in. Huh? And I was used to looking over there and seeing them numbers. Huh? Had it dwindled to nothing. Huh? Uh, but then huh? I'd look over there and the Lord said just continue son huh? in the things that you've learned huh? and the things that you've been assured of. Huh? And you know what? Huh? It began to help my spirit. Huh? It began to help my soul. Huh? It didn't nearly bother me as much as it did. Huh? And you say, what are you trying to say? Huh? I'm telling you, friend, the poor will always be with you. Huh? Uh, but there's very few times in our lives huh? uh, when we get the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Huh? Uh, when the Lord truly comes in huh? and hovers down and dwells with us. Now I know when we're saved, huh? He is ever present. He's never absent. Huh? Uh, but there's this times old that he makes himself known and you know what I'm talking about huh? y'all some spiritual people in here huh? and when he does that I want to have enough sense huh? and not to worry about taking up an offering huh? and not to do all the other things huh? but I just want to adore him huh? I want to get around the throne of God huh? and worship him I preached the funeral huh? of a dear old saint of God here just a little while back huh? and I said Miss Tilly huh? I want it be a joy huh? and I get to heaven and see the face of Jesus. Huh? She said, Preacher, I'd just be honest with you. Huh? And she said, if I could just get huh, a hoof of his big toe. Huh? And she said, I could spend eternity huh, there thanking him huh, for walking to such places that he walked for. Huh? For somebody like me, huh, I wish to the good Lord huh, that somebody huh, would get around the feet of Jesus. Huh? We 
we've seen the watchers. We've seen the warriors. But now we're going to see the worshiper. So if my math be correct, one out of 17 worship. That's somewhere less than 4%. I don't know exactly. I don't know how many exactly is in here this morning. But ain't it a shame for a majority of our churches just to watch when they have the same privilege to worship as the rest of us do. Look with me quickly in your Bibles. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, you'll find Mary at his feet. John chapter number 11, verse number 20. Remember now Martha came running to where he was. But the Bible said in John eleven twenty 20 that she sat. Listen to what the Bible said. The Bible said in eleven twenty, 20, and Mary sat still in the house. Amen. Listen to what she did. Now look in 11.32. Look real quick now. 11.32, the Bible said she fell down at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. Look with me in John chapter 12, verse number 3. The Bible said she anointed his feet. Can I say to you this morning, friend, you must sit at his feet or you will never anoint them. You must pour, he must be able to pour his teachings into you so that you can pour that that he's blessed you with out onto him. I heard a gentleman preach a message one time on the woman and the alabaster box. He said when she took the lid off. I want to tell you this morning, church, she did not take the lid off. When you take the lid off something, that means it can be used for somebody else. If you read in Mark's gospel, the 14th chapter, you'll find that she broke the alabaster alabaster box she poured it all on him she didn't want it for anybody else she wanted it for him can I tell you this morning there's a couple good reasons in why that she broke it first of all when a high dignitary came into your home and drunk out of your glass or eat out of your plate immediately after he eat or drink they would break that glass so nobody else any lower of standards could use it can I tell you friend there was nobody else in that house huh, that was worthy huh, to eat and to drink huh, out of the cup that the Lord Jesus took huh, for you and I. Huh. And then there was another custom in the Jewish people. Huh. Another custom was the burial. Huh, when the deceased would be washed and anointed, huh, the box would be broken huh, with the embalming spices and put in huh, with him. Huh, so friend, huh, that he would not stink. Huh, but he'd have a different smell about him. Can I say to you this morning, church, hear me and hear me well. There's four types of people that got anointed in the Bible. Kings and priests and prophets and the dead. I'm glad this morning he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm glad he's the great high priest. He's not some prey. Amen. But he is the great high priest. According to Matthew 13, 31, he's the prophet. And can I say to you, according to John the Revelator, he was he that was dead, but is alive forevermore. Can I say to you, you cannot go to the Jerusalem times and find the obituary of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is alive and well. You say, how do you know? Hebrews 7, 25 says he ever liveth. How to make intercession for you and I. Huh? That word liveth, E-T-H. Huh? I mean that it's an ongoing thing. Huh? I'm glad he's at the right hand of God. Huh? I'm making intercession for you and I. Huh? But can I say to you this morning, church, huh? I'm trying to land the plane. Just stay with me. I'm going to help you. Huh? And Mary was the only one to worship huh? him. And friend, worship is a now thing. Huh? Worship is a costly thing. Huh? And man, what she took... Huh? and broke on him huh, in today's terms huh, would have cost her somewhere between fifteen huh, and seventeen thousand huh, dollars a friend it was one year's worth of wages huh, back in the Bible days three hundred pence huh, and man you can study it out I promise you I'm telling you the truth this morning huh, she wanted the Lord to know huh, 
that he was worthy. But in her doing what she did, as she broke four customs of the law, can I say to you this morning, when you worship, you'll break some traditions of men. When you worship the Lord Jesus like you ought to, you will embarrass your flesh. Amen. Because the Lord will nudge you to do something. And you'll just sit there and say, oh no, I can't do that. You'll say, if I stand up, I'll say something stupid. I'll say something dumb. Can I say for you, if you're saved by the grace of God, and that the Spirit of God moves on you, how to testify about Him, it is impossible for you to say something dumb or stupid. Amen. You say, how do you know? The Bible said that the Spirit of God leadeth us unto all truth. Amen. So it's impossible. But you can do something dumb and ignorant. And you say, what's that? When you do it in your own flesh, in your own doing. But can I say to you that Mary broke four customs. Women were only to serve in those days. Amen. She was supposed to be doing what her sister was doing. But instead, she's at the feet of Jesus. Can I say the next custom she broke? Y'all still believe what the Bible says over here, don't you? Bible says the glory of the woman is her what? Her hair. It was, it was against the customs of the Israelite women to take down their hair in public. But instead, she pours that oil. According to Mark's gospel, chapter 14, she poured it on his head. That's where you anoint the high priest. Amen. She poured it on his head. It run down onto his feet, just like it says in the gospel of John. And then she took her hair and she began to wipe his feet. It do some of you ladies real good huh, to take your glory huh, and to put it at his feet. It's well, how long has it been since we have laid aside our self-glory and put it at the feet of Jesus so that we could worship him in who that he is. A woman could not take her hair down in public, but she really didn't care. Can I say in the last thing that she broke is that dowry, that anointment oil. Oh, that perfume was to be given to her husband as a dowry. But she said, I found a man that I'm in love with. And I want to give him everything that's precious unto me. I can't help but think while she's at his feet, she got to singing that old song, What a Savior. Or he keeps me singing. He, man, he just, when she get down at his feet, what a thing it was. You go back and read the, the Gospels. You find people who got at the feet of Jesus, it changed their lives, friend. Can I say to you, you study the rest of the context of the Gospels, you'll find that this Mary did not go to the tomb. You'll find that this Mary did not go to the cross. You say, well, preacher, what kind of woman was she? You want to know what kind she was? She spent enough time at his feet that she believed what he told her. Hey, man, that was going to come to pass. She didn't have to go to the cross. She was giving him the roses while he was still living. As my granny used to say, dead noses can't smell red roses. So she said, why you're here, Lord? I just want to put it all on you. I just want to give you everything that I've got. I want you to know that you are the man of my life. I worship and adore you. Do you know the first time in your King James Bible that you find the word worship and love? It is in Genesis chapter number 22. When Abraham's getting ready to take Isaac up on the mountain. And God said take thine only son uh, the son in whom thou lovest uh, and after that he went up on the mountain and remember what uh, Abraham told those servants uh, he said hold my mule uh, hold my donkey or whatever that was I believe he said is, he said hold my eyes uh, he said me and the lad is going yonder to worship and we shall come again that word worship in the Hebrew means to ascribe worth to or to prostrate oneself down so that that being is higher. In the New Testament, when you study the word worship out in the Greek, it means as a dog licking its owner's hand. Now listen, I'm going to get a little carnal right here. Is it all right? I'm going to give you an illustration. A few years back, my father-in-law got sick with cancer, and shortly after that, he passed away. And my wife had always told my youngins that when I died, they's going to get an indoor dog. 
So my least one to go around and tell everybody, when my daddy dies, we're getting a poodle. I mean, I really believe they was knocking days on a calendar hoping I'd kick the bucket so they'd get them a dog. But I got a soft place in my heart for her knowing how she was grieving her daddy's death and I was on my way to New Mexico on a mission trip. And I said, Mama, if you want that dog, go ahead and get it. And before I could call her back and tell her I changed my mind, she said, I already made a down payment on it. <laughs> so we didn't end up with a poodle, but we ended up with a Maltese. And I told the girls this. I said, that dog comes here, I ain't feeding it, I ain't watering it, and I ain't cleaning up after it. Hey, Amen. That's exactly what I told them. And they... So, they got, I ain't done it yet. I've done a little bit of the cleanup because I've caused a little bit of problem from time to time. But I, came, I come home, and that dog will be standing on the back of the couch waiting for me. And if I, I pretend that I'm on the phone, she will bark until she gets my attention so that I stop what I'm doing. And then the moment I begin to rub her, she begins to lick my hand. She begins to let me know that I'm the man for her, that she loves me, that she worships me. Amen. When's the last time when you esteemed him like that? I mean, friends, sometimes, and let's just be honest, my dog's that. Matter of fact, one of my oldest daughter's friends said, I don't believe in reincarnation, but if I did, I'd love to come back as one of your dogs. <laughs> Amen. And I thought, well, ain't that something? Man, we can't show her the love of Jesus, but she'd love to come back as one of our dogs. Y'all get that in a minute. But I begin to look of how that dog loves me. But then sometimes I begin to look and see myself at the table as one of them that's watching and one of them that's worrying instead of one of them that just shows up and worship. You say, preacher, you don't know where I'm at. You don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. But I do know this. If you're here in this building this morning, and you're saved by the grace of God. You've got the same promises that I've got in that book. He has promised never to leave you nor forsake you. I have never studied a storm in that book, in that Bible. You hear me? I've never studied a storm in that book that Jesus wasn't in the midst of it. I've never studied in there where he wasn't capable. Some storms are in the will of God. You say, preacher, you don't know that. Mark chapter number 4. He said, let us pass over to the other side. It was the will of God that them men got in that boat and went to the other side. You say, you can't, st I'll prove it further. If that storm was of the Lord, Jesus would have never rebuked the storm. That storm was of the devil. And the Bible said he rebuked the winds and the waves and said, peace be still. And they laid down. But I also can tell you there's some storms we bring on ourselves. Amen. You say you can't prove that. Acts chapter 27. Remember when Paul said we ought not loose from here? Remember what he said? He told them they ought not loose. It was not the will of God for them to go that way. The Lord had another plan to get Paul unto Caesar. But thank God, even when we get in a place where we ought not to be, remember what Paul said about halfway through that chapter? He said, men be of good cheer. For an angel of the Lord stood by me this night. And said, not their man's going to lose his life if he abides in the ship. Can I tell you, any, there's, amen, the Lord's never lost one. You say, well, oh, what about Judas? Judas was never of them in the beginning. He was of his father, the devil. Amen. That's, you go there in John chapter 17. He said, he, Jesus said, Father, all that you've given me, I ain't lost one. I've kept them. Neighbor, I don't care where you are. He ain't going to lose you. If a sparrow from heaven cannot fall without him having his eye on it, he's not lost track of you. He careth for you. Amen. So I want to ask you this morning, Amen. why do we come to service after service? Say, so, well, I believe I'm just going to watch the preacher, or watch the choir sing, or watch the preacher preach. And I'm just going to get up and go on back home. Just like I can. Can I ask you why? Song leader, would you come? Pianist, would you come? So they're making their way to the piano, getting a number of invitation. Can I ask you this morning, who are you? Really, what are you? 
Do you realize this was just days before the Lord Jesus died? And there should have been a smell of death in the air, but instead there was a smell of worship. You say, Preacher, how do you know? Do you know that every time after that that Mary let down her hair, there'd be a smell of what she had put on the feet of Jesus? Amen. If you go over there in Mark's gospel, friend, I'm about to have me a spell. If you go over there in Mark's gospel, the Bible said that every time this gospel is preached, it's a memorial unto her forever. Do you get just a little smell of him this morning? Don't you? Amen. Friend, when's the last time you smell? You say, preacher, what does he smell like? Have you smelled him? Yes, sometimes he smells like the rose of Sharon. <laughs> sometimes he smells like the lily of the every valley I've ever been through. There's sometimes, friend, he smells like fresh baked bread. He said, I am the bread of life. He that eateth in me shall never hunger again. He said, your fathers did eat of the manna in the wilderness and are dead. But he said, if you eat of this bread, honey, you'll live forever. Why don't you stand this morning all over the house of God? But then I realize right in the midst of our watchers, we've got some of you in here that are going through some things that I know nothing about. And you're worried about it. You've already tried to figure out how you're going to get through what you're going to do. Can I ask you this morning, and I mean this with all respect, many times we're like a buzzard when we come to the altar. That that was God's burden, we'll come up here and talk to the Lord about it, and then we'll pick it right back up and carry it right back with us. That that's got you worried this morning, ma'am, sir, that that's got you worried this morning, why don't you come and cast it on him and leave it?